Welcome to the new lecture of the Real Analysis 1 course. Please check the description of this video to find the links to the previous video, the next video and the entire playlist of this course. We shall now move on to the next subsection, Power Sets and Candor Theorem. First of all, we will see what a power set means. Suppose we have a set A. The power set of A is denoted as P of A. It is a collection of all the possible subsets of A. For example, if we have A is equal to set X, Y, Z, then the subsets of A will be phi. Phi is the empty set. And we know that the empty set is a subset of any set. If we look at the subsets of A with uh, one element, then it will be singleton X, singleton Y, and singleton set Z. Then the two element subsets of A will be set XY, set YZ, set XZ. Then the three element subsets of A will be the set A itself, set XYZ. Now these are the possible subsets of A. Now if you make this as a set, then this set is the set of all subsets of the set A and it is denoted as P of A and is called the power set of the set A. Point to be noted is that P of A is a set and all the elements of P of A are sets. So P of A itself is a set and the elements of P of A are also sets. We have a question here that A is equal to set ABC. List the eight elements of P of A. Do not forget that phi is considered to be the subset of every set. Part B, if A is finite with n elements, show that P of A has two raised to n elements. So first consider part A. Let A is equal to set ABC. List the eight elements of P of A. P of A means the power set of A. So you are given A is equal to set ABC. Then you have to list the elements of P of A. So elements of P of A are the possible subsets of A starting from phi which is the empty set. Then the singleton element sets A, set B, set C. Then the two element subsets AB, set BC set AC and finally the three element subset of A which is set ABC, the set A itself. So if you count the number of elements of P of A, it will be 8. So this is 1, 3, 3, 1. So altogether the number of elements in P of A are 8. Now moving on to part B. If A is finite with n elements, show that P of A has 2 raised to n elements. So given that A has n elements, then you have to show that P of A has 2 raised to n elements. To prove this, we use the method of mathematical induction. So we will start with n is equal to 0. So n is equal to 0 means A has 0 elements. That means A is a null set. Now when you consider all the possible subsets of A, the only possible subset of A is phi. So P of A is a set consisting of phi. So here you can see that the number of elements is 0 and here you can see that the number of elements is 1. So we can say that any set with 0 elements has 2 raised to 0 equal to 1 element in its power set. So the result is true for n is equal to 0. Now we shall show that the result is true for n and prove that the result is true for n plus 1. That means if sets of size n have 2 raised to n elements in the power set, that means has 2 raised to n different subset, then we have to show that sets of size n plus 1 has 
2 raised to n plus 1 different subsets. Now we shall consider a set with n plus 1 elements and show that it has 2 raised to n plus 1 different subsets. So let A be a set with n plus 1 elements and let small a be an element of the set capital A. Now what we do is that we remove this element from the set capital A. That means we will consider the set A minus singleton A which is obtained from A by removing the element A. Now you can see that the set capital A minus singleton A has n elements and by our assumption this set A minus singleton A has 2 raised to n subsets or in other words we can say that the set A has 2 raised to n subsets which does not contain the element A. That means there are 2 raised to n subsets of the set A which does not contain the particular element small a. So we have 2 raised to n subsets of capital A which does not contain the element small a. Now if we include this a in all these 2 raised to n subsets of a, we will get 2 raised to n subsets of a which will contain the element a. So now any subset of a will either contain a or will not contain a. So we have listed out all the subsets of capital A. So the total number of subsets of capital A equal to 2 raised to n subsets which does not contain small a plus 2 raised to n subsets of capital A which contains the element small a. So total we have 2 raised to n plus 2 raised to n subsets, 2 raised to n subsets which does not contain small a, 2 raised to n subsets which contains small a. So total you will have 2 into 2 raised to n which is 2 raised to n plus 1 subsets for capital A. So we have found that the set A with n plus 1 elements has 2 raised to n plus 1 subsets. Then by the principle of mathematical induction, the claim is proved for all n element of capital N. Let us now move on to the next question. Part A of the question. Using the particular set A is equal to set ABC, exhibit two different 1 1 mappings from A into P of A. Part B, let B is equal to set 1, 2, 3, 4. Produce an example of a 1, 1 map G from B to P of B. Part C, explain why in parts A and B, it is impossible to construct mappings that are onto. We shall see the solutions one by one. First, we shall look at part A. We are given the set A is equal to set ABC. Exhibit two different 1, 1 mappings from a into P of A. Now we are given that A is equal to set ABC. P of A means a power set of A and the elements of P of A will be phi the empty set, singleton sets singleton A, singleton B, singleton C, two element subsets set AB, set BC, set AC and three element subset set ABC. So this is the power set of set A. Now we have to find two 1 1 mappings from A into P of A. The first one is the element A goes to singleton set A. The element B in set A goes to set AC in P of A. C in A goes to set ABC in P of A. This is one example. The other one, the element A in A goes to the set BC. The element B in capital A goes to the set singleton B in P of A. The element C 
in capital A goes to the set AB in P of A. So you can see that both these mappings are 1-1 one, one because every element of A has different images in P of A. Here also every element in A has different images in P of A. Now we shall move on to part B. We are given the set B is equal to set 1, 2, 3, 4. Produce an example of a 1, 1 map G from B to P of B. So we shall see an example of a, a 1, 1 mapping from B into P of B here. 1 is mapped into singleton set 4. 2 is mapped into the set 3, 4. 3 is mapped into the set 1, 2, 3, 4. And 4 is mapped into the set 1, 2, 3. You can clearly see that this function is or this mapping is 1-1 one, one, because all the elements in B have different images in P of B. Now part C of the question. Explain why in parts A and B it is impossible to construct mappings that are onto. So here in parts A and B we have constructed 1-1 one, one mappings from A into P of A and B into P of B. Now in part C we have to explain why such a mapping cannot be onto. We know that if A has n elements, P of A has 2 raised to n elements. And we know that 2 raised to n is far greater than n. So when you define a function from A to power set of A, we know that power set of A has far more elements than A. So it is not possible to define a function from a to p of a which is onto. We have a theorem here called the Cantor's theorem which states that given any set capital A there does not exist a function f from capital A to p of a that is onto. This means that for any set a the function f from the set a to its power set p of a is not onto. Now to prove this we use the method of contradiction that means we assume that the function f from a to p of a is onto. Now f is a function from a to p of a implies that for any a element of the set capital A f of a is an element of p of a. Now p of a means the power set of a whose elements are subsets of capital A. This implies that f of A is a subset of capital A. Now this means that for any A element of capital A, f of A is a subset of capital A. Now since we have assumed that this function f from A to P of A is on to, any element of P of A can be written as F of A for some A element of capital A. Now any element of P of A means any subset of A. So any subset of A can be written as F of A where A element of capital A. So any subset of capital A can be expressed as f of A where A element of capital A. We have discussed earlier that for any A element of capital A, f of A is a subset of capital A. Now it is possible that A is an element of f of A and it is also possible that A is not an element of f of A. So A element of f of A and a not an element of f of a purely depends on the function f. Now consider the set b is equal to set of all a element of capital A such that a not an element of f of a. Now from the definition of b it is clear that b is a subset of a. Now from here we know that any subset of A can be expressed as f of A where A element of A. Now since B is a subset of A, we can write B is equal to f of A dash where 
a dash is an element of a. Now since a dash is an element of a and b is a subset of a, this implies that either a dash is an element of b or a dash not an element of b. a dash not an element of b means a dash is an element of b complement. Now a dash is an element of b implies that a dash not an element of f of a dash by the definition of b because b is defined as set of all a element of capital A such that a not an element of f of a. So a element of b means a not an element of f of a. So here a dash not an element of b implies that a dash not an element of f of a dash. Now from here we know that f of a dash is equal to b. So this implies that a dash not an element of b. Now here we started with a dash element of b and here we got a dash not an element of b. So this is a contradiction. So we rule out this possibility. Now we have a dash not an element of b. a dash not an element of b implies that a dash is an element of f of a dash from the definition of b. From the definition of b, a is an element of b if a is not an element of f of a. So a is not an element of b means that a will be an element of f of a. So here a dash not an element of b implies that a dash is an element of f of a dash. Now we know that f of a dash is equal to b from here. So this implies that a dash is an element of b. We started with a dash not element of b. We got a dash element of b. This is also a contradiction. So here we have an element a dash element of a with f of a dash is equal to b. But this a dash cannot be an element of b and this a dash cannot be an element of b complement also. So this means that such an a dash cannot exist for which f of a dash is equal to b. This means that the function f from a to b of a is not on to. And this completes the proof of this theorem.